Michael Smith and Mark Spears. Obviously, that was Steve Kerr. And uh, a, a Mark Spears, uh, Michael Smith sometimes wears shirts with musical artists on there. Uh, I'm thinking Bob Marley, so much trouble in the world. Now listen, I'm telling you, if Steph Curry doesn't have scrimmage time before this playoff series starts, I'm wondering if Steph Curry is going to be involved in this series. And Mark Spears, are you with me that I think the Nuggets might be able to pull off the upset if Steph Curry is not 100%. What do you think? Before I get started, I have to pay my bet and pay my respect. Wait, we'll get to we'll get to that. We'll get to that. We'll get to that. Should, we'll get to that. Uh, we'll get to okay. that later. All yeah, right, we'll all right, later. all right. We'll get to that later. Answer to your question. Right. Tomorrow is big for Steph. We'll we'll get to that. Um, because tomorrow's their scrimmage day. So I think after around tomorrow afternoon, we'll have a lot of questions answered as to whether he will play or not. The scrimmage thing to hear from Kerr was quite interesting that he needed a scrimmage to, in order to play. Um, but they could still potentially scrimmage again on Thursday. I would think that because the game is on Saturday night, they don't want to do that two days in a row. Um, you know, uh, could Steph be a game time decision? Based on what Kerr said, tomorrow's the day. So I'm very, very intrigued by that. I was told last week that Steph would be questionable for game one. Uh, that they're going to ramp him up this week. They kind of been a little quiet to the vest in terms of what he's going to be able to do. But come on, man. Yeah, I, I know you guys expect Steph to play. But I'm going to tell you who's not going to play. Just came out the news that Composo uh -oh. from the Nuggets uh, got suspended for the game one for pushing Wayne Ellington when they played the Lakers the other day. So oh, okay. the Nuggets will be down in guard. But you know what I thought you, you were going to say? Like oh, go ahead. But we're going to say, Mike. but but okay. Even if Steph plays, even if Steph plays, do you like the? I like the Nuggets in this series, and and I and I, I have much respect for the Warriors and all stuff. You oh oh, we're frowning. You don't like the Nuggets in this series. If Steph plays, no, definitely not. Um, I saw this lineup uh, before Steph got hurt. That was really really scary. It was Tim. Poole and Clay. And the way they move the ball, and then you got Draymond in there moving the ball too. Um, Looney's a really good passer as well. That, that was just too much to deal with from a perimeter standpoint. And I, I think you'll see a lot of that. And if you watched how Clay played at the end of the regular season, Clay's yeah. back. Clay's yeah. back. And now he's in a position where at minimum, you know, he's going to have a day off between games. There's not going to be any back-to-backs. And so game one and two, he's had a lot of rest before game one. Obviously, before game two, it's just a day. But um, between game two and game three, is a three-day rest. So that, that also could play in with Steph where they might say, you know what, let's bite the bullet game one, play game two, and then Steph will have several days off in between. I just, if Steph plays... I, I just think there's just too much firepower offensively uh, for the Nuggets to match it, especially if their second and third best players aren't playing. I thought you were going to say, you know, who else is not playing? I thought you were going to give us a, some breaking news on Luca because I was going to ask if Bishop TD Jakes could, you know, bring him into the Potter's house don't in Dallas good. and get some hands on that <laughs> cat. You know what I'm saying? Like, I mean, that blows up no, everything. Look I'm good. looking at Dallas thinking like Dallas could be some kind of. You know, it's hard to be a, a, a dark horse as the four seed with home court advantage. I thought Dallas could maybe be a dark horse in the Western Conference, but without mm -hmm. the most, maybe the most important player in the NBA to his team. I mean, that, that could change everything in the, in the playoffs. But you're saying it's not looking good for game one. I'm not looking good for the series. Or what do you know about that? Uh, injury? that, that those calf injuries take a while, man. You know, yeah. um, and when you were dealing with a superstar like that, you tend to err on the side of caution because you don't want to risk more injuries. So I'm at least for the first couple games, man, I'm expecting uh, Spencer Dinwiddie and the miracles. <laughs> like, uh, and, 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 and with all due respect to Spencer Dinwiddie, who's, who's been awesome since he's come over from Washington. Utah's tough, right? I mean, yeah. I, I, I just don't see it. I, I, I might have picked Utah on the series anyway, to be honest. Oh, um, really? Okay. Yeah, I okay. mean, I, I just think they 
have a well-rounded team. Um, I, they don't have anything to really stop Rudy in the in the post. Although you know they got some size, but nothing that can stop Rudy. Uh, if if Doncic is out, how do they match the scoring and and the assist that he gives? I, I just that's that's too big of a void. That's probably a bigger void than anybody else has to deal with. And they they haven't had him gone for a lengthy amount of time to probably you know pretty much know how to adjust without him. Although they have five days of practice this week, so no, I I picked the Jazz in six actually. Okay, well uh, we've delayed it long enough. Without further ado, your man of your word. Yes, you Mark Spears. Are. Take it away. I, I am a man of my word, and all you have is your last name, right? And 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 in December, I made a mistake. Um, now I will preface it by saying I can't account for injuries. I I, I can't look into the future. Exactly. Stuff happens. Don't beat yourself right? up too much. But it, I mean, hey, injuries are part of the game. They're part of yeah. the game. Yeah. And I picked the Lakers in what was this uh, November or was this December? It was November. It was a long time ago. Maybe it's December. Maybe it's December. Maybe it's December. Oh. December. No, they were, they were, yeah, they were struggling pretty badly. So, oh, well, could, yeah. yeah, could have been. Yeah. Either way, yeah, early on. Anyways, yeah. I'm belittling the, the whole thing. I lost the bet to Michael Holly. Um, we, we agreed that I didn't have to give him a case of wine, but rather <laughs> a really nice big bottle of wine that's, you know, a Magnum bottle. And so I got him something pretty special. It's just, I'm gonna read this because this is this is not an everyday wine, but you you're not an everyday dude. It's a long-awaited 2018 RHF Rutherford Cabernet Sauvignon, produced by Frank Family Vineyards, named them in honor of Richard Harvey Frank, the founder of the vineyard and former executive at Paramount Television and Disney Studios. It's a small production sourced from two premier vineyards located in East, Eastern Rutherford, California. The Cabernet is soft and supple with currant and blackberry flavors, playing off the notes of cinnamon, dark chocolate, and deep herbs. Congratulations. Enjoy your Rutherford Cabernet Sauvignon from Frank Family Vineyards. And the bottle's a lot bigger than the picture. Oh, and it's in wow. the mail tomorrow. Wow. All right. Well, I pay my well, bets. A few things. A few things. A few things. First of all, appreciate you, brother. Love you. I know. I, I know and I knew that you were going to come through. Um, soft and supple. That's how I like my wine. Soft and supple. There's a joke there, but I won't make it. And I'll say this also. Um, I will not drink it until you come to Massachusetts. I am going to we're going to have a glass together. The two of us. I know you always you travel. So maybe you'll be here for the NBA final. You know what? Is that a prediction? I'm, I'm hopeful. I have my cousin shout out to my cousin Jacob Armand. I think he might be playing at Emerson College with Bill Curley. So we'll go to a game and then if he assuming he goes there and afterwards uh, We'll open that big bottle. Mike's gonna have to come That's too. Right. That's a lot of wine. That is. Well, so you know, I like my wine. So the, just again, That's to good recap stuff and, too. And, you and make sure you 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 put it in the right fridge too, bro. Just to just okay. to recap and put a bow on this on this for in, in, for those that don't look at that damn get smile it. too. The look bet, at that damn smile the, that The bet was that the Lakers would get out of the first round. They obviously did not make the plan. Well, they get they what, did get what, out of the first round. They didn't get <laughs> technically maybe well, out, of, I'm right. well, out of the first round. Yeah, they got up out of there. Sure. They got out of the country <laughs> probably at this point. Yeah, yeah, that's one way of looking at it. Um, yeah. Not the way you, you, you anticipate. We, most of us anticipated what moves can they make to get out of this mess is the question both at head coach <laughs> given a dysfunction when it comes to who's running it a lot of cooks in at their kitchen, but also Russell Westbrook, I saw a, a, a report, a rumor, that Indiana rumor about Heald and Brogdon for Russell Westbrook in a first round pick. That feels too good to be true for the Lakers. That would, that would talk about well, that would be bailing here's them the out thing big that time. Comes in, here's what comes into play now. Now that he's in the, Russ is in the final year of his deal, he's easier to trade. Right. So now you have teams that are like. But Indiana, they still don't want a first could, round pick with it, right? 
which okay. I know is 27, I mean, 29, you know, but can't keep I'd give, throwing I'd give, if good I'm money after bad This money. one's actually, yeah, I'd, if I'm the Lakers, I'd probably do that. If, I mean, look, your window is about what? So long with LeBron James, and it, it's been hey, obvious F with the Pacers. <laughs> yeah. That's the, that's the yeah. ethos in L.A., right? <laughs> yeah. I mean, the the – the Pacers have been trying to shed salary, as you saw with Sabonis. Um, they even flirted with my, uh, trading Turner as well. So, I mean, perhaps there certainly is a possibility there where Russ makes like 40 in the last year of his deal. They could shed a lot of contract. Um, I'd still keep an eye if they're willing to trade the pick uh, with Houston as well, because I mean, I wish John Wall would have played. I, I wish he would have just decided to come off the bench so we could have – I think he would have helped his stock if he did play. And, uh, you know, perhaps they may decide that John Wall with his catch-and-shoot abilities could be a big um, uh, pick as well or a big trade. But because Russ is in the last year of the deal, expect yeah. some teams that are considering trading some salary, shedding some salary, uh, getting in the mix much more than they were at the trade deadline. If they could, if they could get Brogdon and healed after yeah. all of this, I don't know. Yeah, that's but, a, yeah, that's but a, Mike, that's you know a, what? They, game they wanted healed but, bad before. But, remember, they wanted him last year. Yeah, right. Yeah. That's, okay. that's a game yeah. changer. I mean, they get both but, of those dudes. But he, yeah, healed is good. But Brogdon, I mean, first of all, you have to deal with contracts. Both of those contracts, and uh, doesn't Brogdon? Brogdon has some injury concerns. I mean, that's the thing with him. I, I like him when he's healthy, but he's yeah. He's, oh, he's the kind club. of already. It would be great I, I to think they need, have. Yeah, Brogdon I'd roll, and Anthony I'd roll the Davis dice on the with, same with team. Him. I'd, I'd roll the dice with him because he's another guy that catches, shoots well. He's a really good uh, complimentary player. I, I think he and Hill would give them the shooting that they they would definitely need. Um, in terms of coaches, you know, there there've been a lot of names, but I do hope that they consider two guys. Uh, that are already on the staff, David Fisdale and Phil Handy, both who have a lot of respect from uh, LeBron James. I, I hope they get interviews and the, uh, the opportunity to at least uh, get a shot at the job. But I, I mean, I keep hearing names, but when I hear names to me, if it's not connected to LeBron James, like to me, it doesn't make sense. He, he's the best player on the team. He certainly has a lot of power on that Haven't team. Haven't they listened so. to him enough? Still Both got the, he's thinking still about the face of the franchise. Team. I mean, this is this. Well, it's funny you say that because there's a report that he may and, and we got. Um, yeah, let's sneak this in. There's a report that he may eschew signing the extension that he's eligible for this year and just play out next year, the last year of his contract. So if you're the Lakers, a how worried are you? B why would you listen to him about a head coach if he ain't committed to you for the long haul? Well, well, yeah, I mean, certainly if he decides to do that, that, that kind of changes the game on it, right? I, uh -huh. I still think those two guys on the staff for are, are one, Fisdale's worthy of another opportunity, and I think Phil Handy has a bright future as a head coach in this league. So, I mean, either yeah. either way, I think they'd be fine there. But I, I think the NBA players, um, and this is said respectfully to LeBron, man, take the money, man, figure the rest out later. Paul George gave you a map. You signed a deal. And you get your trade later, get your money. You never know, especially as you're getting older, what your body could do. And uh, so I think the Paul George model is the best model to find. You can't tell me that if LeBron signs a deal and then after next season decides he wants out, that they're not going to accommodate him and force him to stay. No, he, he, he'll it always be in, get It might be in their best interest anyway. Yeah. 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 Hey, Spears, I, I, take, let's I always talk say, you take your money, man. Mm hmm. Spears, let's talk about uh, last night and a money moment for the Minnesota Timberwolves, <laughs> and it may not mean a lot to a lot of people, but for them, uh, you know, second playoff appearance since 2004, they win the game over the Clippers, and they celebrate like crazy. I mean, they really got yeah. into it. Patrick Beverly in the arena on IG, probably in the streets of Minnesota and say uh, Minneapolis and St. Paul. I don't know, but what did you think of the celebration? Do you think they went too far? Uh, well, Beverly, I think it's, you know, and he's always emotional. It, it's, it was Clippers induced. Like if, if they had beat New yeah, Orleans or San Antonio to get in, I, I don't know that he would have been that emotional. 
I mean, the Clippers basically got rid of him, right? And didn't want to give right. him extra money. And so I think that certainly has a lot to do with the trolling, uh, with the bitterness. The fact that he cried with the, was with telling With the Versace robe today? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> the, the, the fact that, you know, hey, it's... Hey, he, he, he got his 15 minutes of fame. It's about to end pretty soon, so you might as well run with it, right? Yeah, this, this but, might be the uh, most we've talked about Pat Bev since he sent uh, Russell Westbrook out the playoffs, doing yeah, too much. But and, I, I am and, and curious to see the, the, the him and Ja. I know he's going to be certainly try to be an irritant on Ja. And the intriguing thing about that series is Memphis is now not an underdog anymore, right? Like, and you're facing, it's almost like that Spider-Man meme where they're pointing at each other. You got two young dogs yeah. that are trying to prove something, that are thirsty, that haven't done anything, that want to show that they're ready to be uh, varsity teams in this league. And, you know, it's one thing to do it in a regular season. It's another thing to do it in the postseason. So um, Minnesota is not going to be scared of Memphis. They probably feel they're on the same level, if not better. I'm, that's a series I wanted to see. I'm really, really excited about that. Uh, but but I, I do think that, like, lost and all that, like, I'm telling you, this dude, Ant-Man, is the truth, bro. And we talked yeah, about him before. Like, yeah, that kid, for him, that to uh, essentially be his first playoff game, and he didn't play in the NCAA tournament, and this is the first time that his lights were bright, was yeah. amazing. Like, that like was he, one like of the said, best first playoff games. When the lights come I've on, I show seen. up. That's what he said, he, right? He when showed up, on, man. Show up. But, but yeah. I was like, when else has he had lights, really? Right? Right. right. He didn't go school, deep at Georgia. Like, AU, yeah. like, yeah. And, whatever. And, Trash hey, can ball. That kid is cold, man. Swimming. Like, get whatever. on his bandwagon. Day one from Aunt, day one. Aunt Edwards. Whatever it, you need me to do. Clean up. Cl- straight Edwards clean up. Wow, six. A superstar. <laughs> Kids start buying that jersey. He's yeah, the next man. one. He is the next <laughs> one. Kudos to that young buck. I got to spend some time with him at Georgia. I saw yeah. it before. He's special. And he has a personality no to boot. No doubt. Hey, um, we're going to let you go, but on the way out, who gets the eighth seed in both conferences when this playing tournament is all said and done? Nets at seven, Wolves at seven. Who's eight in each, in each conference? Uh, I think the Clippers end up getting the eighth seed. Um, I'm going I'm to go with J.B. Bickerstaff in Cleveland. I think they get the eighth seed, too. Wow. Wow. Uh-huh. Even yeah. Over Atlanta? Uh-huh. You got Atlanta tonight? Well, no, I mean Atlanta. I know, no, but I'm they saying they got to win first, right? Well, like, I'm saying, but if, if Atlanta wins tonight, I, I think Atlanta, Atlanta, Cleveland. I think I make take Atlanta there. Hmm. Ah man. Yeah. Uh, I'm gonna go with I'm gonna I'm gonna uh, I have a I have a feeling about Cleveland this year. I know Trey's gonna be mad at me for saying that. <laughs> <laughs> But that the game's gonna be in Cleveland. That that matters. Although Trey plays big games on the road, I, I feel like Cleveland's gonna sneak into the playoffs. And I think Big right. Fella might be back too. So the Afro will be back. That size will, I think, play a big well, difference. Hey, thanks for watching, brother from another on YouTube. Make sure you hit subscribe before you leave, and be sure to watch us three to five p.m. Eastern time on Peacock. Appreciate you.